Well, everything in this space. Ow! Good night and. <laughs> Right after we moved here, I invited you to take a tour of the first iteration of my tiny wood shop, but it just got a little bit bigger, and I want to show you how. Come on in. As it turns out, trying to build a woodworking school while also starting a giant farm, while also trying to keep a small business afloat, while also dealing with some major mental health struggles is not super realistic. <laughs> I've used this space to do a few woodworking projects, but ultimately I needed this space to get a little bit bigger because all of my power tools were starting to become solid rust buckets sitting out in the barn. Tools are meant to be used and loved, and that's exactly why, even though there's no humidity or temperature or anything else control in here. While well, everything in this space is all about form and function and atmosphere, this space is all about function. I needed to get my tools plugged into the wall so I could turn them on. And so it is not the most ideally organized thing. There's a lot of weird stuff going on in here, but you know what? It works. Right there is where I keep my animals and they like to create a lot of dust. Plus, this is Tennessee, where we basically live in 80% humidity all the time. Not the best thing for cast iron tools, but as long as I keep these things wiped off and with enough car wax on them in between uses, they stay pretty okay. Right under this ladder is my dust collector. Having a dust collector is really important when you're using bigger machines like these because they clog up with sawdust and chips really, really quickly and then stop working. As we walk right in here, this little L is both because this is the only only place I could get the proper wiring and the proper plugs to run these tools, but also because this is where the real magic happens. We want to always go from the jointer where we start to the planer to then finish. <laughs> and we've got the bandsaw here to break things down. Everything's on wheels and can be moved so that we can use the space as efficiently as possible. Even beyond the electrical, the layout of this space was the only way that I could have enough clearance on one side or the other of my jointer. From a workflow perspective, I need to bring wood in from the outside through this door here. I'll chop it down to whatever basic length I need here and then carry it over, run it through the jointer and the planer that has the dust collector right there. This bandsaw moves around depending on what I need it for, but everything kind of has to be close enough to the plugs and the dust collector that make it work. You'll notice in here, similarly, I love everything to be on the wall where you can grab it easily, but because it's so much dustier and grimier in here, I have to kind of be careful about what I put where. There's some scraps and some storage. Here's my chair making kiln to dry some parts, a little wood rack there to just make use of good space as every wood shop needs. A microwave to heat my baby goat milk for when I'm bottle feeding. And in a mobile space like this, you want to be able to bring power where you need it because you don't always have it right where you want it. Tools on walls, always a good idea. And props to my dad for picking out a decent selection. Next on the tour is some roof sealant because a couple weeks ago, my roof blew off into the tornado. And so we've been dealing with some beautiful leaks right onto my cast iron as everyone wants in their wood shop. Over here, we've got some feed storage for my animals and my little milking room because dual purpose, dual space. What do we do when we need something? We use what we've got do what we need to do until we get to where we need to go. Over here, we've got a tool chest on wheels, which protects the tools inside, makes them mobile, but the slanted top keeps me from being able to set stuff on top of it and then no longer be able to access the tools inside. We've got a drill press, a lathe. One of the things I've tried to do to make myself in some way useful to my mentor and friend, Greg Pennington, the chair maker, is helping him turn chair part blanks. And so that's what's going on here. I'll take a slab, rip it down, and in my ample spare time, turn a few hundred chair legs and that's that. Over here, we have, again, function over form, some shelves that hang on French cleats on the wall so that I can pick them up and move them when I'm ready to get out of this space and actually start using it like a barn again. We've got battery chargers where they need to be and everything is all, again, visible so I can find it when I'm in the middle of a project and grabbing all the stuff that I need. Another important thing for every wood shop is to have all the minerals that you need. A little table saw for whenever I get back to construction on the main shop, some surveying tools, 
for making things level. I hate putting things in drawers because then I can't see what's inside, but when you do have to put some things away, a duct tape and a paint pen is going to do you wonders. Here's a hot tip, and it's not just because it involves a glue gun that I have thought of but not had the time to implement yet. But because a lot of these drawers have things inside of them, you can take a hot glue gun and glue the thing that's inside of the drawer to the outside of the drawer so you can see what's inside it. So that's especially helpful if you've got lots of different sizes of screws. It's gonna to take me a whole lot longer to figure out this is a three quarter inch screw than just looking at a three quarter inch screw on the outside of the drawer. But speaking of which, I got this incredible Wilton bullet vise for $50 because it didn't have its little lips, which I'm sure have a proper name, but I don't know it. And I got them on the internet for $30. So for $80, I've got myself a sweet bullet. So over in this corner, I have my sharpening tools for the lathe out and ready. I've got everything in here also on wheels. These little carts are awesome because you can push them over to where you're working and then put stuff on top of them and then leave them for six months while you do other stuff. Here's a sanding station. Everything's got a place and a home. I've got all my sandpaper and everything I need for the lathe right by it. Put everything in your way and visible as much as possible and you will have a great, very trip hazard worthy shop. In my desire to actually run power to my power tools and use them, I needed to replace the electrical panel. Huge, huge shout out to Reno Patrick for coming down from New York and teaching me all about electrical so that I could do that. But as we tore into this wall, we realized that because this window was not installed properly and the ancient air conditioner slash heater that was here was just sitting in a hole in a wall with two drywall screws suspending it above God only knows what termites holding hands and saying a prayer probably, that all had to go. Then saved up for and, you know, spent three months installing this AC unit and it is the coolest thing ever. Even cooler, let me just show you. The electrical panel behind my sign that my friend Mark Stumped Woodworks made for me. Here is this beautiful electrical panel. I wish I could just show you. Actually, I can because I have footage of it. Pat and I made this an absolute masterpiece and also did some very creative wiring solutions so that I had enough power, not just for this room and for the rest of the barn, but also to run two power tools simultaneously. So now we get to have a dust collector and a jointer. It's the things to make the things to make the things. Knowing that I needed to use this space as a workspace and an office, a few months ago my friend Stevie helped me to make these built-ins and expand the usability of this space a little bit more. So now we've got a couple more desk spaces, We've got some drawers. Without access to all of my power tools or a ton of time, what I have been able to do is green woodworking, a lot of spoon carving, a little bit of chair making. So this is a chair that I've been working on for about nine months now, and we're just getting closer each moment to its uh, final sit. It's gonna get put together soon. Behind me, you will see these boards that my friend Josh Nava designed and drew, and they are so awesome and so helpful because they're a great backdrop for my videos and for everything else. But they also have something that's super important for me and the way that my crazy brain works. When I'm in business mode, each one of these cute little signs turns around and holds all of my secrets. This is super important to me because while I do have to use a computer to make my life work, things don't exist in my world if I can't physically see them. So each one of these little note cards points to something that lives on the computer in computer land and these boards and the way that I use them to organize my time and my thoughts and my entire life is something that I learned how to do over the last couple of years with Josh's help. It all started because I used to use whiteboards to write on everything all the time and just constantly write notes on my hands and hope that I didn't forget. Then I moved to sticking post-it notes all over the wall and now it's evolved to this. Is this perfect? Absolutely not. Does it fall apart all the time and do I still forget to do things and miss deadlines? Absolutely, my life is chaos. Have we not already established this by this point? The same way that these boards put everything that I need in front of my face, the tools in this room particularly are hanging on the walls where I can easily grab them and use them and I don't forget that they exist. One thing that is super important in hand tool woodworking is having light, especially raking light, because a lot of the ways that we make things really long and symmetrical and 
look good is by seeing where light is casting shadows. We can see high points, we can see low points. And these are $12 on Amazon. And stability on a workbench is extremely important. And one way that I achieve that is by putting a whole bunch of crap onto the workbench. So that gives it actual physical mass. Then in an imaginary world, when I am using a hand plane or something, it helps the bench not to scoot across the floor, which is great. Here are some of the things that give my workbench mass. Some tool storage, shock of all shocks. Some easy grab tools that I use all the time and need really close to the workbench. If you wanna see more about, you know, the hold fests and the other things that live on the bench, go check out my tiny shop tour video also on YouTube. Amidst all these physical changes that needed to happen with the office and the barn to make woodworking a little bit more practical during this weird in-between time while I'm still trying to build a school, a lot of changes have been happening to my blog on Squarespace as well. I've been using Squarespace to write my blog since 2012 when I started my very first woodworking project. And so you can imagine it's collected a lot of things throughout the last few years. And as my business and my whole life has changed so much, I wanted my site to reflect those changes. And even though I'm not super tech savvy, Squarespace makes managing a website really, really easy for me. I can easily drag and drop whatever I wanna move around or shift or change into a beautiful artist design template and then present it to the world. It's also worth mentioning that with all of the uncertainty that the last couple years have brought into my life, that Squarespace's consistent support of my channel is literally how I'm able to still be making YouTube videos. So if you're looking to start a website of your own, maybe you've got a photo gallery that you wanna share with potential clients, maybe you wanna start an online store, support a company that supports me and check out Squarespace. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash trades and you'll get a 10% discount. Though this is not the space that I had planned to get all this stuff set up in, it's actually worked out pretty well because what I'm working towards is the dream, the school, getting open and doing all that stuff, but that dream has had some major hiccups and kind of stops along the way. Well, hello, Oliver. We're getting there. We are building it together, literally and figuratively. You all helped me last year to get a roof on the building when it was an actual emergency situation to get the materials covered up, and we did that together. So let's get back to building some fun stuff together, shall we? Why not, Oliver?